be talking about the southern portion, the southern tip, and uh, some of the adventure opportunities down there. My name is John Baston, and I work in the Mountain Travel Sobek office. Um, I have a hybrid position where I organize custom trips, and also I go out in the field and I guide trips uh, in Alaska, in North America, and in Mexico. And um, I'm especially fond of Mexico because it's sort of like the Baja, oh, it's, it's, excuse me, it's like the Alaska of Mexico. It's separated from the rest of the country. It's known for its wildlife and its wilderness, and it's a sparsely populated place, and it's, it's a wonderful place to visit. So we're going to be joined today uh, by Brian, who's a great trip organizer for Mountain Travel Sobek on the Baja Peninsula. And she's going to be talking in a bit, but I'm just going to introduce the company, Mountain Travel Sobek, um, talk a little bit about our roots in adventure travel. Uh, we are the combination of two companies, Mountain Travel and Sobek. Mountain Travel was started in 1969. Uh, basically, the Sierra Club was organizing many adventures around in the western United States and into the mountainous regions in the Rockies and the Sierra Nevada and the Cascades, but they did not want to do any international travel, so uh, our founder, Leo LeBon, uh, raised his hand and said he would take responsibility for doing some adventure travel, got a couple of partners, Alan Steck and Barry Bishop, and they were off to the races. Uh, we were the first company to offer international trekking in the Himalaya, and we also went over to Europe and all over the rest of the world. Um, and at that time, there, there weren't any other companies that were offering this sort of thing. And nowadays, uh, there are hundreds, uh, if not thousands, around the world. Um, so they started the mountain travel portion of our business. Uh, there, and then this picture that you're looking at is of two crazy guys uh, that started the Sobek portion of our business. They were river rafters on the Colorado River in Arizona at the time when it was the only river in the United States and probably the only river in the world that was being rafted uh, by these nylon rafts that were a modification of old military gear to bring uh, machinery across rivers and muddy areas. And they decided they were going to build these rafts and put them on planes and take them all over the world. And uh, they pioneered the first descent of about 80 rivers all around the world. So in 1980, these two uh, very adventurous companies came together, Mountain Travel, the hiking company, and Sobek, the rafting company. And we uh, now call ourselves Mountain Travel Sobek. Their next slide. Anyway, I am one of the guides for the Mountain Travel uh, Sobek trips now, and uh, I have to tell you that if you are a guide working anywhere in the world, uh, you want to be a Sobek guide. Uh, working in the adventure travel business, I see how deep our roots are and our involvement's been and, and what kind of great contributions we've made to this business and helped to grow this industry that now has, as I said, hundreds if not thousands of other businesses around the world. So um, if you're on a trip with us in the Galapagos or if you're on a trip with us in Europe, if you're on a trip with us in Asia or even in the ends of the earth down in Patagonia, um, you're going to find that we're going to have the best guides uh, wherever you go. Uh, our staff in Emeryville, which is right near Berkeley and Oakland, uh, works very hard to ensure the highest quality of trips. Uh, we probably have about 30 people that are working in our office uh, administering these trips all over the world. So without further ado, I want to introduce Brian, who lives down in uh, Todos Santos and helps us organize our trips. And she's going to specifically show you uh, how great our trips are down in Baja. Uh, we do quite a few trips. It's a great place for families. Uh, and 
uh, groups of other travelers and uh, I'm specifically going to be helping to guide a trip down there in the end of April from April 23rd to 29th so uh, if you're listening in hopefully you can join me then. Brian? Thanks so much John. Um, good morning, good afternoon everyone and uh, welcome to the Mountain Travel Sobek webinar on exploring the beauty of Baja. Uh, as John said, I'm Brian Halrigi, and I'm part of Mountain Travel Sobek's ground operations in Baja. And I'm addressing you today from my home in Tota Santos, Baja, California, Sur, through the magic of voice over internet technology. Now, for those of you who have, may have questions that occur to you throughout the presentation, um, there is a, an ability on your webinar, go to webinar uh, screen there to write those in. Uh, please do write them as they occur to you, and we will uh, answer them at the end of the presentation. Um, now, this, what you're looking at now, hopefully, um, is a map of the southern part uh, where we'll be doing the remarkable journeys for this Mountain Travel Sobek trip. And if you look in the lower uh, right corner there, you'll see the San Jose del Cabo Airport. And most, for most of you, that will be your port of entry into Baja. And the first thing that we'll do is we'll travel 90 minutes through those mountains there um, and across the desert to Toto Santos. And that's really your first introduction to what is really the most amazing and compelling thing about Baja is you have this dramatic uh, vision of the desert meeting the ocean. It's really quite remarkable. And your home during your stay in, uh, in Toto Los Casitas. And Los Colibris Casitas is on a hillside overlooking 70 miles of beautiful, undeveloped, pristine beach. We really do have the most stunning views in Todos Santos. Uh, and my husband Sergio and I started this place before. So it's not only our business, it's our home. And we love it. And each of the rooms here at Los Colibris Casitas have views. Um, and they can all be configured with either a king bed or a two twin bed. So it's very convenient to have your configurations of friends and family that you want to travel with here. And everyone always asks us about the bathroom. So I'm just going straight out here to some photos of our bathrooms, all of which have custom woodwork, which you can see there, and beautiful Mexican tiles. So all very comfortable. These are the gardens of Los Colibris Casitas. This is actually a very unusual shot. I took this while we were having some of our summer rains last summer. Most see rain in Baja, so this is kind of a, a magical moment for us. But since we've been here on this hill for so long, um, our gardens have really grown in, and it's part of Los Colibris, such a special place. And this is our yoga platform at Los Colibris Casitas. It's on the highest point of the property when you're up there doing your yoga or if you're me up there having a glass of wine I'm not so much into yoga but it's up to like great watch the sunset up there you can often see the osprey by with their fish you see the whales out there it's really a, um, a place where you can really be involved in nature but also have this conference of home if you actually want to do yoga this is what it might look like and another great feature of Los Colibris is Iker's Colibri Cafe this man that you're looking at this photo is Iker Al Gori. He is a reformed lawyer who is now a chef, and he's written a cookbook on cooking adventures in Baja California, sir. And he is our in-house chef here. And he really, his whole philosophy of cooking is cooking with love and with wonderful fresh ingredients. And eating in his in his cafe is really a highlight for a lot of people that are staying here with us. And this is often we also have outside dining here as well. Now, on the beach in front of Los Colibris, as I mentioned before, we have 70 miles of pristine, undeveloped beach. There's often whales and dolphins and manta rays uh, in the waters near here. And then in the back, we have the Sierra La Laguna Mountains. So it's actually, we're cradled in between the mountains and the ocean. It's really a stunning. Uh, Toto Santos is a true desert oasis. It is a true watering hole in the desert. So it's green and lush, unlike many places in the in and this is one of the amazing things about being here in Todos Santos and being at Los Colibris Casitas in particular. You can be laying 
and you can look out and see whales leaping, and this is a humpback whale, and they're extremely athletic. And you'll see them, yeah, sometimes you'll see two, two males getting into a whale tail smackdown, and they'll smash their whales, their tails again and again from it, sometimes up to 20 times. And even if you're not up, you can often hear this from your bed, and not just the whale tail smackdowns, but you can hear their blows. The air is such that when the whales come up and go, whoosh, you can just hear that while you're sitting in your bed here. It's really quite a remarkable experience. So now we're going to Todos Santos, and we're going to head across the Baja Peninsula up to La Paz. So you see we're going to cross back up a little bit further north to the Pacific Ocean, and now we're heading into the Sea of Cortez, um, which as I, you probably all know, Jacques Cousteau called the Aquarium of the and the Galapagos of the North. Edwin from Mountain Trouble Sobek here checking things out for you guys a few years ago. And we're going to move showing you your accommodations at the Mountain Trouble Sobek camp on Isla Espiritu Santo. Now, Isla Espiritu Santo is an island uh, of La Paz boat ride uh, from there. And it is an absolutely stunningly beautiful place. It is a national marine park. It's part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, and it's one of the best marine wildlife using places in the world. So our job uh, is, is really just to enhance your experience while you're there. And you can see here from these photos that at, uh, at our camp there we have with really nice mattresses, beautiful linens, beautiful furnishings, rugs, Fabulous views out of every tent. We're right there on this just steps from your uh, from your tent, and great ambient lighting. There's uh, lanterns all throughout. There's places to store your. It's lots of attention to detail. It's very comfortable, and we have two fabulous chefs on site who do three one and daily happy hour. So it's, you're in the pristine of nature, but it's really getting the luxury of nature. And this is what it looks like, no light pollution out there, unless we're creating ourselves with our lanterns to get to the office and to the tents, and you can see the Milky Way through the sky. It's really quite compact. But that's not, the, that's not everything. There's actually just really amazing opportunities, great adventures there on the island. And one of my favorites, and I, what I think is one of the most joyful experiences in life, is swimming with the sea lion puppies at the permanent sea lion colony of Los Eslotes. When you go out there, they really embrace you. They are so to see you and really want to interact with you. And you can see in this photo here, they're really a ham bone, and there's really a connection with them. You can see this little guy is kind of looking up, I'm a mammal, you're a mammal, no, let's talk about it. Super, super fun and really kind of an amazing way. They'll present their bellies for a belly rub, they'll nibble on your flippers. And, of course, they're sea lions, and they're accustomed to the water, so usually humans get exhausted um, before they do, and they're, they're quite sad to see us go, posing for a beautiful shot with a ray of sunlight coming through. There's giant manta rays in the Sea of Cortez, which are absolutely fabulous, and there's also smaller, what they call mobula rays, which I'm going to show you a little bit more of in just a minute. And one of the really amazing things about the Sea of Cortez is that it's one of the places in the world with the whale sharks. Now, just a few years ago, the whale sharks were really only um, around Isla Espiritu Santo for a few months every year. But as the waters have gotten warmer, they've been staying longer and longer periods of time. So now, for most of our trips that run from October through the end of May, we can also include swimming with the whale sharks. And these are the largest fish in the world. They're absolutely enormous. They're actually, they're only juveniles. So they're only just a little bit larger than the boats that we go out on. There's also, and this is an amazing uh, variety of wildlife, and this is two humpback whales, um, a mother and her uh, growing calf. And this shot really goes to me some, the huge richness in Sea of Cortez. On your right side of your screen, you can see a whole uh, school of mobile arrays. And then on the left, that is a humpback whale coming up with its mouth open as it feeds. And here's another 
feeding and the baby coming in. And right underneath there, in that same area, this is part of that same series, there's a fin whale just swimming serenely underneath them. And then onto the bird life here. So many remember the Jacques Cousteau called this the Galapagos is because so many people think that if you want to see a blue foot of booby in your life, you have to go to the Galapagos. That's not true. Going to the Galapagos is wonderful and seeing the blue foot of booby there is fabulous, but you can also do it much closer to home. Uh, right here in uh, the Sea of Cortez near uh, the Mountain Travel Sobic uh, base camp. There are two blue-footed booby rookeries right near the camp and they really do have beat this blue. It's kind of amazing. Another friend, just two bays over from where the base camp is, there is a magnificent frigate bird colony. And this is when the males, this is what they blow up their red uh, neck cap uh, caps when they're in mating season. Um, and they do really do look very impressive, and this is some of the babies that they have here. And just a little things about magnificent frigate birds is that they are the only coastal birds that do not have oil in their feathers. So if they fall out of the mangroves, which is funny, is they can drown if they get waterlogged. So this is why they're called robber birds because they they can't they don't actually want to touch the water themselves, so they take the fish from other birds. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that Baja California Sur is a magnificent uh, location for birding. We have over 430 here, including six endemic species. Uh, so for you birders out there, this is a very rich place to come and explore. And of course, there's the uh, adventures that we go on in kayaking. Of course, it's, it's one of the best uh, kayaking locations uh, in the world. And the water really is that is that clear in many places with those beautiful sandy bottoms. And this is a, I love this photo because it really shows part of what the, the island, beautiful pink uh, volcanic ash there. And of course there's stand-up paddle boarding. And yes, it really is that beautiful and amazing there. If you play your cards right, you can get somebody else to do your paddling for you. And this is having a family group out there at the camp. Now, while we're at the island, we do encourage doing absolutely nothing and just sitting around and hanging out with your friends and reading trashy novels. This is a great place for that as well. Uh, and a great, beautiful hikes all over the island with incredible vistas. So now, enough of Espiritu Santo for the moment. Take you some place that we don't currently go with Mountain Travel Sobek, um, but it's a beautiful place called Magdalena Bay, and it is where the gray whales. Uh, they migrate 6,000 miles from Alaska down to Baja to these lagoons. You can see how they have this protected lagoon area there on the map uh, to mate and give birth. And these type of experiences are available there. The whales, when they, the gray whales, when they come in, they're buried in the lagoons. There's not uh, predators in there. And so they like to explore. And part of what they like to explore are the humans and they love to come up, they love to get a good pat and get a good rub um, and you can see the faces of the people who are enjoying that experience. It really is quite remarkable to have um, this um, with, these, with these other souls in the sea. Um, here is a mother and baby, as you can see the babies and so it, and these here in Mag Bay, the time in the lagoons of Baja, they essentially teach them how to be whales, they fatten them up uh, they teach them how to swim. Sometimes in the mouth of the lagoons, you can see them catching the surf, so where, and the baby whales are surfing in there to kind of get strong. So they do have the 6,000 mile journey after that. And the photo, this is um, my sister Molly. I'm in this photo, and this is several of her friends. And we were out in Magdalena Bay um, last round, and she kept, this is called spy hopping. She lifts her whole head. Uh, out of the out of the water to take a look at it. And you see her eye is that thing just right beneath the water line right there. And then this is my sister Molly uh, with her whale. Uh, she said the whale's name was Sophie. And I don't think we're in a position to argue there. This is very calm, amazing moments um, with the whales. So then back down to Toto Santos, which we've had a little bit of an and Surfing is the next thing that's up on the agenda, and Toto Santos 
is actually a world famous, uh, world class, and one of the reasons, and it's a great place to learn to learn to surf, because you can see in this photo here, if you look in the bottom, it's got a smooth, sandy bottom. Uh, so when you wipe out, which you will when you're learning how to surf, uh, you're not going to get scraped up. It's just nice and smooth and easy. Um, and the waves break in different levels so that if you're more advanced, you can go further out and catch the larger waves. And if you're just learning, you can be close in, like this little guy here, and kind of learn to surf the phone. So it's, it's super, super. We guarantee that everyone will get up on the surfboard at least for a few moments. And one of the great things about surfing here is that you don't have to in great physical shape. Um, you don't have to be an athlete. Um, people of all body shapes and sizes can surf and really, really enjoy it. So it's, a, it's a great sport. And then a really cool thing we have available here in Todos Santos um, is there is a lot of rock art by the now extinct um, Guaycura and Pericu Indians, who were the native peoples of um, Baja California Sur who uh, unfortunately succumbed to the diseases brought by the missionaries. But there are still plenty of traces of them uh, in the area around this. And one of our friends is a guy named Anibal Lopez, and he spent six years of his life uh, going around the ranches in the desert area in uh, Baja California, sir, finding many, many of these rock art sites, and he put together this book. So the, the uh, rock art painting walk is with him on a private ranch that is still not open to the public um, and he really takes you through um, his investigations, what he's learned and to the site. It's really um, an amazing experience and it's really not something most people even know about in Baja California. And then one of the most beautiful walks that we have here is um, the Cliff Walk, the Pacific Bluffs uh, Cliff Walk. And this is where we start. We start at this sweeping expanse of beach um, which is actually where the local fishermen put in and come up and then all along the way incredible views and great plant life and our guides are all fantastic uh, naturalists and interpretive hikers so you get a lot of information flora, the local fauna and a lot of the local history of Todos Santos when it was a trading port and a sugar uh, his, uh, area and then at the end we have picnic lunch on this beach Las Palmas Beach, and this is about as crowded as we ever see it. That's how it looks. So again, um, Todos Santos is a true oasis, and you can see it here in this palm oasis. Now, I mentioned our guides before. Uh, middle in the white shirt with the hat on, that's my husband Sergio. He uh, leads our guide team here. And all these other guys in these yellow shirts, they are all wilderness first responders. They are all great naturalists, um, and they are all um, great with human beings. They are really fun, really great, and I think they really make the difference in the mountain travel Sobek um, experience uh, here in Baja California, sir. So, John, what I have to say for our uh, wildlife and our adventures here in Baja, and I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thank you, Brian. That is incredible. Um, it always amazes me. Every time I go down there, there's um, it's like little miracles in nature happen, and it's such an exotic place, and it's so close, too. So uh, it's really easy to get to. Like you say, it's like the little Galapagos that's down there, and few people realize it's so biologically diverse, and yet it's it's uh, a lot closer than going to the Galapagos. So um, one of the one of the things that we do during these webinars is we open it up to questions. Um, if anybody has any questions, they can t type them in and maybe we can answer them for you. And I'll just, I'll just add to that, John, that um, Mexico in general, and Baja in particular, is one of the most biologically diverse places on the planet. Um, and they continue to find new uh, endemic species that grow that are only in this area. It's really just incredibly rich and diverse, and literally right in the backyard of the United States. Yeah, it is. It's it's as a naturalist and as somebody who's worked as a naturalist for nearly thirty years now, I was astounded because I thought it was just a kind of a desert down there where it met the ocean. But you know, 
even on the land, it's incredibly diverse because it's a certain kind of desert in the Sonoran Desert, which is our richest type of desert. And then the, the ocean itself um, is incredible. Uh, this kind of shells are on, I mean, all the way down to the invertebrates and the shells that wash up on the beaches. It's, but, you know, the last time I was there, the thing that struck me even, like, you know, um, in a different way was about Baja is that the seafood is so good. Um, you know, it's amazing to be just sitting in the desert and eating fresh seafood every day. And I had no idea, and that wasn't even something that I expected to be a good part of my trip. But uh, uh, I yeah, think but that's well. Well, just to say to that, I mean, because we are we're, we're we're a spit of land between two oceans, so it is very rich. And this is one of the great things at the Mountain Travel Sebec um, Base Camp in Espiritu Santo is there are two uh, old fishermen who live on the back side, on the other side of the bay from, our, from, our, from the camp. And there are two brothers, one's 88 and one's 90. And they come over every day to sell fresh fish. Um, uh, Espiritu Santo is a, uh, is a protected national area, natural area. So no one except for these fishermen who have these um, heritage rights can live there. And uh, so it's a great actually cultural experience to have them come over and really kind of uh, enjoy being them and having the great seafood that they're able to get from the waters around there. Yes, thank you. Hey, hey Brian and John, we just had a question come in here. Um, can this trip be arranged as a private departure? John? Oh, certainly, yes. Uh, actually, I, uh, I have a, a group of... Uh, ten ladies that are coming down as part of a 60th birthday party. I think they're going to be coming down a week after, a week before we're down there. And uh, yes, this trip certainly can be arranged, and uh, we can add on to it days uh, and and do different kinds of experiences as well. And yeah, if you could just go into a little more detail on kind of the age range and the the ability level of of people going on this trip. Um, you know, what are kind of the physical requirements and, you know, maybe go into a little more detail about the family aspect of it. Brian, do you, do you have any sort of uh, age restrictions? Uh, no, not really. Um, for for the, the mountain travel Sobek trip, the, the Baja, the sea to um, uh, Pacific to the Sea of Cortez trip, uh, since it does include some hiking and surfing, you must be at least five years old to take a surf lesson. Um, but that's the that's the that's the only restriction. Um, it's a great multi generational uh, trip um, because there's plenty for every everybody to do. For even when we do the cliff walk, um, which is about a three and a half hour walk, there's actually an easier route um, that people who maybe have some issues with balance or don't want to walk quite that far. Uh, can do, and they can just enjoy the beautiful beach at the end. And of course, being on the island, everyone can just relax. Um, there's something for everybody to do, no matter what their level um, of experience. And to kayak in the Sea of Cortez, you do not need to have any experience. And for younger kids who may not be strong to paddle, that's simple enough. We put them in a double with their parents or with a guide. Um, and that's the same thing. Sometimes people have injuries or they have arthritis or whatever uh, other issues that may prevent them from being able to paddle very well. Again, we can put those folks um, with a guide and they can still get out there and, and really enjoy the trip. Great. Thank you. That's great. And then um, what is the best time of year to go? We have another question here. I would say the... Um, it's good, better, and best. I mean, the, the only time that you really want to avoid is hurricane season, and that's easily done. Um, that's about mid-August to uh, mid-October. But from mid-October until mid-August, it's, it's really beautiful here. Um, the sea turtles, the whales, uh, the whale sharks, the sea lions, um, everyone is accessible from mid-October um, through end of May, so that you have that richness, that whole period. Um, and the, if you want to see the gray whales up close, that is a more restricted time frame. That is um, really mid to late January to mid-March. Um, 
but other but other than that, it's the richness is there the rest of the rest of the year. The weather is um, is really quite nice. Um, it doesn't really start getting too hot until say mid July. Um, but we have vacationers coming all the way through through August, and they enjoy it. So um, so just avoid the, the the height of hurricane season, and you're in good shape. Great. And then uh, we had another question about um, people with dietary restrictions. Are there uh, accommodations able to be made um, for people that may be uh, vegetarian or a specific diet, like a vegan diet? Yeah, we we can accommodate it all and, and accommodate it very well. Um, our chefs are very accustomed to um, working with vegan, vegetarian, paleo, um, and any variations thereof. It's um, they they appreciate having the gauntlet thrown down, and they they work very hard to make um, uh, the food great for whatever your particular predilections or restrictions may be. So that is absolutely no barrier to coming to Baja. Uh, and then we had another question come in. Um, what are your group sizes like? So what's what's kind of your average group size? Um, what are the, the what are the smallest amount of people you can take, and what's the group uh, limit? John, yeah. Um, well, mostly that's in the capacity of Brian to organize the trip. But <clears throat> in general, we like to keep our group sizes, you know, twelve members or less. But uh, and we'll organize trips for groups of. We can do. Uh, you know, private couples, um, but generally it makes it more cost effective once you get to four or five people in your party. Yeah, that, I, I agree with that. And I would say um, 12 is a nice size for, um, for, for group travel, but if you have a large family reunion um, or a group of friends or uh, some sort of celebration, certainly um, th those can be accommodated. Okay, great. Um, that is all the questions we have. So, uh, Brian and John, if you guys uh, want to finish it off, any closing comments? Uh, um, John, talk about our upcoming trips here. Definitely. What's that, Brian? Oh, if you want to just say a few words about the two upcoming trips, the the departure that you have in uh, April and then the next trip in uh, November 4th? Oh, okay. And so um, what what is the difference between those two? The one that's in April is a little bit of a quicker trip, and then the one that's going to be in November has a, a few extra days, and what will they be doing not during those extra days? So the the, um, the one the one in uh, in April is more focused on uh, on the island and the adventures there on the island. Although that we do include the cliff walk there, um, and the the one uh, is the standard departure, which you can find on the Mountain Travel Sobek um, website for Baja California, and that includes the uh, the the rock art painting walk and the surfing and all that. So um, it's a full trip that we went through in the in the presentation. Oh, okay. And that's not. Does it include Magdalena Bay in November as well? It does not. But I think um, I think it'd be certainly worth exciting and see if we can get that into um, into one of the itineraries uh, for next season. Yeah, generally, you know, Magdalena Bay is going to be a good place to go to see the gray whales. Uh, probably mid January through April. Is that about right? Through mid March. Uh huh. Through mid March, and if you're if you're in the Bay Area right now, it's kind of amazing. Those whales that they call the friendly whales, uh, they are swimming by the coastline right now. I had a friend who was out on the on the coast of Marin last week and saw them swimming, um, and they're some of them are returning back from the lagoons. They are the longest migrating of all mammals in the world, and they are heading up to the northern part of Alaska where they they eat bugs. They just eat the tiny little isopod like pill bug type things that live in the mud on the north slope up near where they get all the oil from Alaska. And that is enough to feed them to make them gain 10 or 15,000 pounds so that they can swim without eating at all all the way back down to Baja. So 
Just thought I'd add that in there. That's pretty incredible. But that's that's something that you would only see at Baja in uh, in the in the winter months, uh, January fun. through April. But there are many then, other kinds of species of whales that occur there, and all the whale sharks that are at uh, all times of the year. Exactly, and we see um, the Sea of Cortez has um, over seventy percent of all the cetacean or whale and dolphin species in the world. So any time of the year when you're out there, uh, you have a good chance of seeing some species of whale, whether it's a minke whale, a fin whale, a pilot whale, uh, a blue whale, uh, you know, the humpbacks and the grays, uh, just to, just to name a few, and of course all their porpoise and dolphin cousins. Um, it's just incredible. It's an embarrassment of riches on the on the whale and dolphin frontier, and those and you can see different types of whales all year round. Yeah, and and you know my final statements are. If you've been to Baja, you already know. You already know what an amazing place it is, and you, you probably are thinking about going back there and maybe doing something different than you did before. And if you haven't been to Baja, um, it really should be someplace that's on your own map. Uh, it is a great adventure. It's a, a marvelous world. It's a very easy place to, to be, and it's just incredible for us North Americans to have it so close to us. So. Uh, I just want to invite you to come on down. Hopefully, you can come down and join me in April. And I second that. I think um, we have been here in Baja, California, sir, since 2002, and we never get over just the the amazement and the joy of seeing whales leaping here, of being able to play so to interact so much with the marine life here, and have these uh, truly remarkable experiences, and to always be finding new types of plants. It's, um, it's an incredibly rich and diverse area, uh, and just also just incredibly beautiful and very just comfortable and nice to be here. All right then. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Brian, and uh, thank you all for paying attention and tuning in. And if you have any questions, um, uh, I'm at Mountain Travel Sobek, and you can email me or call me there. And uh, if you're interested in designing some sort of a custom trip, I will be working with Brian to try and make it the best possible trip for your family or your group. So thank you so much, and uh, have a great day. So long. Thank you.